Gear Sega Sam Nick, have you ever wished that Fractal would just make a small version of the Mashify series of cases? Well, your wishes have been granted because today we're checking out a brand new case from Fractal. It's called the Meshify 2 Nano. It's an ITX case, not a small form factor case. And basically what they did is they got the Meshify 2 and they shrunk it. So let's take a closer look. removal same as the regular meshify series it's got this little latch on the back you can just pop it lift the glass away and you can see it is tinted tempered glass the back panel is exactly the same the little latch pop it and away we go top panel removal lift the top of the case away as with the larger meshify cases it's got this dust filter at the top which basically just clips back and you can lift the dust filter away. Then there's two screws here and here. If we remove these top two screws, then push up and remove the top bracket from the case as well, which gives us access when building from more than just that angle. The front mesh panel is the same as the other meshified cases where it's actually a hinged door. You pull on the Fractal logo and it swings open and then you can actually just pull that whole panel off as well. For power supply support, you're looking at 165 mil and about 200 mil if you remove the ducting for the front cooling. The PC is loaded into the back of the case with one of these brackets and I've said this many times, I love these brackets for putting in power supplies. You don't have to negotiate anything going in and yeah, it just makes it easy just to slide her in the back. You've got your drive cage in the bottom, which supports a single 3.5 inch spinning rush drive or a 2.5 inch SSD. Three other mounting points for 2.5 inch SSD. So you've got this position here, we rotate it this way. So you can actually do one here and one here, as well as a drive down the bottom too. And then I'm pretty sure you could probably mount one of them on the inside too. There's lots of included Velcro tie downs for the cable management on the rear of the motherboard tray, which is very nice to see, but you've got two rubber grommets, one here, one up here to pass all the cables through. There's also this cable grommet here to help with passing things like GPU power cables and whatnot through as well. There's two pre-installed fans in the case. There's a 120 mil fan up the back. The fans are not PWM, they're DC powered. And there's a 140 mil fan up the front as well. Again, not PWM, but DC powered. You can do up to two 140 mil fans up the front. So you can do two 120s if you want as well. Up to a 280 millimeter radiator as well. For the top, it's a little bit different. We can do two 140 mil fans or two 120 mil fans, but you can't top mount a 240 mil radiator because of the clearances usually between the heat sinks on the motherboard and your RAM. The one caveat to doing 140 mil fans at the top opposed to doing 120s is the top fans need to be 12 millimeter slim fans, otherwise they just will not fit. So. Make sure you take that into consideration if you're wanting to do 140s at the top, but I would recommend just going with 120s to make your life a little bit easier. The Meshify 2 Nano will support ITX and DTX boards. However, they say that it will support MATX, but I think that is a little bit misleading because of the way the motherboard tray is. So there are some MATX boards that are three slot. However, the main issue being here is the motherboard tray is sunken, so even if you could get one of the smaller boards, it'd probably touch the board and catch fire and your computer explode and just be a terrible time. So don't do that, don't do that. GPU support with this one is a little bit interesting given that it's not great, given the size of many really large GPUs that we've seen over the last two years. So I'll give you a bit of an example. The maximum GPU length without the front fan is 331 millimeters. And just to put this into perspective, let's do the ye old ROG Strix test. This is the RTX 3080 12 gig, and it does not fit. However, if I was to remove that front fan, this GPU would fit no problem. However, you'd have no intake at the front of the case. So 
This GPU I probably wouldn't recommend in this case. With a smaller GPU like the RTX 3080 Ti, the founder's card, it easily fits inside and I would almost go as far as saying that there's enough clearance to have a front mounted liquid cooler as well. I can't say that for sure just yet. I did notice as well that there's only two slot covers. However, there is space for three slot covers here. This could potentially be a problem with some larger GPUs, but as I mentioned, the GPU support in this case is not great. As for air cooler support in this case, you're looking at 167 mils for maximum cooler clearance. From memory, that's the same as the Meshify 2 Compact. Pretty standard internal case wiring. We've got our connectors for all your lights and all your switches and all that jazz. You've got your front panel audio connector, as well as a USB type C front panel connector and a USB 3.2 front panel connector as well. We've got a headphone and a microphone jack, a USB type C port, a power button, a reset button and two USB type A 3.2 ports. As mentioned earlier, there's a top mounted dust filter. Click it back, lift it up. And there's your very standard fractal dust filter. There's also a bottom dust filter, which goes the entire length of the case. There is a very cool and interesting feature that I noticed as well. It's got this little air scoop here to assist with airflow going into the bottom of the GPU. I kind of like that they have this directed air channel here and it actually can be removed in two sections. So you've got the front section. So if you're installing a radiator at the front, you'll move this front section here and you've still got this part of the intake scoop and it's just one screw on the back side to remove these individual pieces. So two screws in total. So that's basically all you got to know about this little thing over here, the Fractal Meshify 2 Nano. So let's do a build, all right?
All right, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build in the brand new Fractal Meshify 2 Nano, but let's take a look at those thermals. What you're seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are pretty average. Actually, a lot worse than I expected, but there's a few things going on here. The first thing is we used a 12900K, and the only reason why I use this CPU is because it's one of the only chips I've got in the tray to use right now. So I thought the 12900K would be a good fit for this because it might be a CPU that you're looking at using in a case like this. Not only that, the GPU, the temperatures are actually quite good with the GPU here, but I wanted to use a much bigger GPU, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, so stay tuned, yeah. So thermals, it is what it is. You're seeing what you're seeing on your screen right now. Here's something about the fans that I want to address just talking about thermals. We always get one or two comments like this. Why didn't you use the fans that came with the case? Well, to be honest, people don't really use those fans in my experience. They'll usually build their system with a set of fans in mind or they'll be transplanting all their fans from an older system it's kind of rare that you will use those fans in that configuration, unless they're decent fans. Everyone wants RGB! Unless you don't want RGB. There's a PC part picker list down below in that description down there. Click the link, have a look at all the parts, but let's talk about the Fractal Meshify 2 Nano. Now, this case is uh, strange. They got the Meshify Compact, and they put it in a vise, and they squeezed it down, kind of in like a trash compactor, and what they did is they squeezed out all the good bits, and then some of the trash was left over, and that's what they made this case out of, which is uh, very strong for what I'm actually trying to say. The case isn't too bad, but I think there's a lot of missed opportunities here. First thing, the cable management is good. So no missed opportunities there. It's the same as the other fractal cases, very easy to build in, plenty of room for activities. What I don't like here is the fact that you have to mount a radiator at the front. You cannot mount the rad at the top. Hear me out. I actually did try to mount the radiator at the top. I ran into a lot of issues. I didn't film this because I was just doing it as I was test fitting things. I can get the radiator to go up the top. The RAM needs to be the correct height. The fans will go on. The problem is the pump top for most AIOs will interfere with mounting a radiator at the top. If they just made the case a little bit taller, like a little bit wider, it would have worked. Ultimately, I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity because in terms of internal layout, it's very close to the NZXT H210i. Obviously, the mesh front makes it better. However, that little bit of wiggle room would have made it a lot better. In fact, here's something that I noticed as well. To mount the 240mm rad at the front, I had to remove the hard disk sleds to get enough height for the fans to fit on the bracket by themselves. So either way, you do need to make some sacrifices. Now there'll be people in the comments saying, oh, you could have put the AIO tubes down. Tried that too. GPU just did not fit. Not only that, I have to remove the intake scoop from the bottom of the case if I decide to go tubes down, which will actually harm the thermals of the GPU far more. It's a small case, guys, right? There has to be sacrifices. Speaking of sacrifices, there's a really big sacrifice here, and that is GPU length. Now, at the start of the video, when I was showing you guys GPU compatibility, and I said in the clip, if I play the clip now, I would almost go as far as saying that there's enough clearance to have a front-mounted liquid cooler as well. Turns out, a GPU like the 3080 Ti Founders Edition with the front rad does not fit. It's about three to four mils off the clearance, so it just does not fit in. There's one other thing that I need to mention as well. The EPS power connector, the hole for the cable on the top left-hand side of the case is very, very small. To run the cable through, I actually had to remove the motherboard and then pull the cable through and then plug it in. I didn't show that in any part of the video at all, but I thought I'd mention that it would be something to look out for. What's actually good about this case though? Okay, first off, 
It's exactly the same as the Meshify 2 Compact in terms of build quality, which means it feels like they quite literally got the big case and they made it smaller. The panels snap into place the same way, the fit and finish is the same, the paint's good. It's a very well executed case. Overall, the Meshify 2 Nano is okay. It's not my favorite case in the world, but it is a good attempt at making a classic case a lot smaller for those people who have been asking Fractal to make a smaller version of the Meshify forever, because this is exactly what it is, a smaller version of the Meshify. If you're interested in the Fractal Meshify 2 Nano, they're going for around 99 USD, around 189 Aussie dollars at the time of filming this video. This case launches right now, as of this video going live. However, I gotta say, 189 Aussie dollars for this case, if you want a case that's got better clearance, better compatibility, bigger GPU clearances, just more actual internal usable space that will also support an ATX PSU, get the Cooler Master NR200. This is far too expensive for what it is. Although it does carry the Meshify badge in name, this thing should be priced around about, I'm, I'm gonna say 129 Australian dollars. 189 is far too steep for this case. Don't get me wrong. It's a wonderfully executed case if you plan out your build, but this one for me is a bit of a miss. Anyways, guys, if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking the join button down below. And if you like videos like this, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell. The cowbell's on the way, guys. It's coming. It's coming. All right. Once again, I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. It's going to be someone asking about the cat in the pocket. We've had this t-shirt going on the channel for four and a half years. It needs to and retire. some people still ask to see the cat in the pocket or someone will say, I know it's in the pocket. Right, it's, it's just, it's literally Claire. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let us know what you think of the Meshify 2 Nano. Honey, I shrunk the bin. I don't hate the case guys. It's, it's actually not too bad, but sometimes I'm allowed to not like things, right? Well, there's actually the Meshify 2 Mini, which is the MATX version that's actually dropping at the same time as this. So I'm sure you'll see those in your sub box. I think we've got one and we'll probably take a look at that and maybe we'll compare the two at a later date. But for now, I'm out. McGraw, Arrivederci.